Now let's use React Router to change the content on our page and also to change the URL up here in the browser without actually refreshing the page. So if I take a look at the menu over here, if we open this up, we can go to the about page and there's some new content and the URL has changed. And if I go over to the home page, there's different content and the URL has changed back to the home page URL. So you'll notice that all of this is happening without our web page having to refresh. Starting with the code from the previous tutorial, I'm going to add React Router to our project. So let's jump over to the terminal and I'll yarn add React Router DOM. So the reason why there is a React Router DOM is because React actually has two packages. There's React Router DOM for websites and then React Router Native for native apps. Uh, they work slightly differently, but you use the DOM version for a web app. Now that we've got the package added to our project, we can go ahead and import that into app.js and take a look at how this works. Now, right off the bat, there's actually quite a few things to import. So I'm just gonna paste these imports in and you can see that we're importing browser router as router. So this is just a nice little shortcut to allow us to use the router element like this instead of having to type out browser router. Then we've got switches, routes and links. But let's take a look at links first because a link is obviously gonna link us to another page. So what I wanna do is maybe let's create an unordered list over here and then a list item and then we'll create a link. And this link takes in a prop which is the page that we want to link to. So that prop is called to and then we can simply add in a URL over here. So if we wanted this to link to the home page, then we'll just add in a slash and we'll create the link for the home page. We can also add some styles to this by using the class name prop and adding in a class name. So I'm going to say text blue 500, which is a tailwind class. So if I save this now, uh, everything should error out and that's because we're making use of this link tag outside of a router. So there's a very specific way we have to go about doing things when working with React Router and one of those is to make sure that our list is always within the router like that or our links always within the router like that. So now I have a link that links me to the home page. So obviously that's nothing special because we only have a home page at the moment. So let's go ahead and add in another link and we'll make this one link to about and then we'll change the text over here to about as well. So now if I click on the about page, you can see that the URL changes up here in the top of the browser and switching back to home, that changes the URL again. So we've got a home page and we've got an about page. But you'll notice that none of the content on the page changes whenever the route changes. So that's actually what switches and routes are for. So let's take a look at how to use those. And what I'm gonna do is just below my list here, we're gonna open up a switch tag. And inside of this switch tag, we are going to place a few routes. So let's create a route for the home page, and this route is going to take in a prop called path, and we're gonna set that equal to a string of slash for the home page, and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the about page, but the path for the about page is of course slash about. So what's happening here is our switch is going to look for a route that matches this path, and then display the content within that route. So let's break this down and inside the uh, homepage route, we can create an H1. I'm gonna copy that heading down and we'll make another heading like that for the about page. So if we save this and we take a look at this in the browser, and we switch between pages, you'll notice that the home page is now the only uh, content that's actually showing no matter what page we're on. So the reason for this is because the slash route over here will always match every other route in our app. So that's just the way React Router works unless 
you decide to say, hey, I only want this route to display if this is an exact match, match for the home page. So you just need to add in the exact prop here. And then this will mean that the route on the content for the home page will only ever show on the home page. So now taking a look at this in the browser, if we go to the home page, we've got the home page content. And if we go to the about page, we have the about page content. Now let's take a look at moving this menu into our menu component instead of having that display in the body of our page. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this unordered list and we're going to paste that into our navigation file over the list that we previously had. And I'm just gonna fix the indentation here a little. But now if I save this, you can see that we've got link is undefined. So we just need to make sure that we are using this import in our navigation at the top of the page over here. But we don't need any of the other stuff. We only need the link. And if we save this now, uh, we'll probably get another error when we open our menu. And that is that the link shouldn't be used outside of a router tag. And that's because if we go back to app.js, uh, our links are in our header components. So what we need to do is we just need to take all of the content outside of that router tag and let's place that within the router. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my footer as well. So let's place that within the router as well. And so now if we save, this should now be working. So we can open up our menu, but now we've got another issue where when we change to the home page, the URL changes. And if I close the menu, I can see that I'm actually on the home page. And if I go to the about page, the URL changes. And if I close the menu, I can see that I'm on the about page, but the menu isn't closing, right? You'd expect that when you click on the link that the menu should actually close by itself. So what we need to do here is go back over to your navigation and go over to each one of these links. And let's actually just break this down a little bit so it's gonna be easier to read. And what we wanna do is we'll get, we're gonna add in an on-click listener on each one of these links. So we'll add in an on-click listener and we'll set this equal to a JavaScript arrow function. And this will set show menu to false. So that will close the menu. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for all of the other menu items within our menu. But we can actually clean this up a little bit more because you'll notice that uh, this file is actually getting kind of long, this navigation file. And this menu is actually all located in a bunch of menu transitions and other JavaScript. And so to simplify this for the next developer who wants to just simply add a menu item, we can take this entire menu and we can put that in another component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new uh, file and we'll call that navigationmenu.js and we'll simply add that as an export. So now we can actually import this navigation menu into our navigation file. So what I'm gonna do is let's just uh, go up to the top here and import navigation menu from dot slash navigation menu. And we can make use of that down here. Uh, great, so we've got link is not defined again. That's because we're not using this import over here anymore. We're actually making use of that in React Navigation menu. And so now you can see that this file is actually looking a lot cleaner, a lot simpler. If somebody wants to change a menu item, all they need to do is go over to Navigation menu and they can see that there's just a unordered list with a bunch of list items and if they wanted to, could, they could copy one down and add a new menu item whenever they felt like it. So this is obviously a lot cleaner to work with for anybody else who starts using our app. 
but uh, now you'll notice that we've got this next problem which is that set show menu isn't defined. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to fire a hook or a setter from the navigation menu component. So what we need to do here is we can simply pass this in as a prop. So on click, what do I wanna do? I want the menu to close. So let's accept some props here. And on the click of this, we'll uh, pass in props.close menu, which is a prop that currently doesn't exist, but we'll paste this in here and we can go back over to navigation menu. And on our navigation menu, we can simply add the close menu prop and set that equal to some JavaScript. And the JavaScript that we're gonna set that equal to is the arrow function of set show menu to false. So what we're effectively doing here is we're passing this function down to our child component, our navigation menu component. And now when we open up our menu and click on the about page, that should still close the menu and clicking on the home page should still close the menu. And now we can probably just add in a few finishing touches. So on our link, I'm going to add in a padding on the Y axis of three. I'm also going to add in a border on the top and a border on the bottom. And then I'm also going to, I, actually, you know what? I think that's it. I think I'll take this class and just copy that to my about and we can get rid of the border on the top because that might duplicate borders. But now if I open up my menu, ah, I see uh, we've got the borders, but it's kind of displaying in text. So let's change the div or the span up here to a div. And then we can also make sure that these uh, links are displayed as block level elements. So I'm just gonna add in a block class and that should create a little bit of spacing. So we've got now spacing and borders. I think the next thing we wanna do is maybe on the menu here, add in the same padding on the Y axis of three and uh, that's looking a lot better. And we can probably just change this to app name as well. As a final finishing touch, we can take care of the content within the main view of our file. So what I'm gonna do is go over to app.js and we're gonna clean all of this up a little bit. So let's create a new folder and I'm gonna call that folder views and this will hold all of our views. So what I'm gonna do is create a new file for the homepage content and we'll call that home.js. And then I'm going to create another new file for the about page content and we'll call that about JS. And these are of course just gonna use some standard React boilerplate. So I'm gonna just copy that boilerplate over to the home page, and we've just gotta change the function name and the export name as well. So now that I've got these two files, I can import those into my app. And I think just to tidy things up a little bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the browser import to the top of the page over there. And then we'll create another import for our home page, And that'll be imported from views home. And then we'll duplicate that down and we'll import about from the about view. And now, we can take this heading for the home page and paste that in on our actual home page content. And we can do the exact same thing for this about page heading and paste that in on the about page content. And in fact, if we wanted a little bit more information on the uh, about page, all of that JSX can go over here and maybe just put in a margin on the bottom of that heading. And then we'll do the same thing for the home page. But what I'll do is I'll take the hello world component that is actually on our app.js file at the moment, and we'll paste that in in the home page, and we'll make use of that hello world component down here. So let's save these. And now let's go back over to our app.js file and 
Inside the home route, we'll use the home component or the home view. And inside the about page, we'll use the about component or well, the about view. And so now you can see I've got an error here, home JS module cannot resolve components, hello world. So that's just because the path is now changed relative to the hello world component. So it's actually got to go to dot dot slash components in hello world. Great. So taking a look at this now, we've got the home page content and we've got the about page content. And I just want to add in a little bit of padding around the container there. So I'm going to take this entire switch and I'm going to create a div that I'll place that inside of. And this can have a class of P3 or P-3. And that will fix up the spacing a little bit. So what that all means is now anytime we want to create a new page for our site, we can simply copy one of these routes down, add in a new path for, let's say, the contact us page, and then we can create a contact us view and import that contact us uh, view down here. And that's as easy as it is to create a new page in our React app. But for now, that's where I'm going to end this video. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to like, comment on this video. Uh, tell your friends this is the best React tutorial series you've ever seen because I really need the exposure and I'll see you guys next time.